the champagne. <laughs> Taylor, if this is your first time to my channel, welcome. This is Champagne Talk series and episode two. We have a special guest, Natalia Smith here. Hello. My lovely friend from college, Boomer Sooner. Yeah. <laughs> so we are going to do um, the topic today of ships, relationships and friendships. We're gonna get down and dirty, talking about our current status, our, pre our previous statuses in relationships and then where we are with friendships now that we are oh my god mid late 20s yeah things have definitely changed so if you're interested in hearing about it and seeing if you relate keep watching What's been going on, girl? Tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, so I'm Natalia uh, from Oklahoma. I moved to Dallas uh, 2014. Um, I am a realtor here, so be sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Oh, yeah. um, Natalia underscore the realtor. Um, and then you'll get that follow back. Um, you'll get tips on home buying. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> but no mimosas included. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, you know, Taylor and I go back from college and um, I'm happy to be here today yeah. to kind of talk about, you know, what we've been going through in the past and present in friendships and relationships. Yes. And we're going to have Natalia back to go more into the home buying realm because me and my fiance are trying to get ready to buy a home and from what I know and how it's going so far, it's not the easiest thing. So Definitely we, need, <laughs> we need all the help we can get. Yeah, so that is great. Yeah. Um, so we're excited. Look for that coming soon. I'll um, probably post the schedule of the different topics I plan to have for the next couple months so you can know when to tune in. Subscribe and like and share for us. Um, and so yeah, she's gonna help us get us together for our house and we will share those tips in the journey with you guys. Yeah. I'll link her pages down below and be sure to follow her. Um, so yes, me and Natalia met in college. We actually met through a mutual friend, right? Yeah. Crystal, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and I met Crystal working at Dillard's, going way back when I started working in the beauty industry for real, for real, um, at the counter at Dillard's. So. And then I started working at yeah. Dillard's. <laughs> yeah, and that's the only time, um, wait, you weren't there before me, I thought. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. remember. But she was in the shoot, oh, ever okay. since I, from the very beginning, this girl is a go-getter, a businesswoman, and like, she has always helped my, me like figure out when we moved, to, when I moved to Dallas, I didn't really know what I was doing, and she came a little bit after, and she already had her shit figured out. So I was like, damn. <laughs> um, so she's always a listening ear and a, a good person to figure out information. So definitely tune into her channels, and I'm sure she'll help you out too. Um, so yeah, today we are going to talk about relationships. Let's start with the relationships and go with. Um, romantic relationships versus friendships. So currently things that are very different for me than they have been for my whole life. Like honestly my fiance was my first real relationship. Okay. So, <laughs> so it can happen guys if you're like damn I still ain't got a boyfriend. If I'm ever gonna get married it gotta happen soon. It can happen just have faith. <laughs> um, but I honestly feel like I didn't know really how to date. And I didn't know how to be in a real relationship. And especially during college when you know you're so vulnerable, you're growing up. That's a very common feeling. Yes. It's awkward and just like you don't know how they feel about you and you don't know how to feel. Our generation <laughs> right. is not in love with being in love. Exactly. <laughs> Even though I was always like a hopeless romantic, so I don't know why my ass didn't know how to fall for nobody, but I was just so guarded and yeah. trying to protect myself from getting hurt. So I acted like I didn't care. And I think a lot of females do that. Like we act like we don't have emotions or we don't care or we just there for the physical part or right, something right. like getting already. And then you have the other two care extremely 
like too much. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I wish we could find a in between. I have the knee down. Mm. So I went sort of like I played with that area a lot, and I, I'm honestly not too regretful of that because I feel like it did teach me a lot. And during the time I was doing that, I really needed to get some things in order. So if I think if I think back now, if I was in a serious relationship, maybe I wouldn't have turned out how I have now. Like I feel like I would have maybe put my dreams on hold and not pursue this and not pursue Allure and Royal Line and all that stuff. And actually Samson, um, we started out as like best friends, became boyfriend and girlfriend, and he instantly like helped me support my dreams so obviously I feel like you're meant for who you're meant for and it'll happen when it's meant to happen yeah uh, if you ask me I had a whole timeline for my life I don't know about you right. I thought I was gonna be engaged by 23 no, don't married by 25 <laughs> just for the record half my friends from you know high school are married oh yeah <laughs> well I can't I don't yeah. even know yeah, yeah, but I think about I'm it. I'm like the last one, um, but I also have the oldest son. Some of them don't even have kids right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I kind of did things a little backwards. Hey, whatever, <laughs> whatever works. And you've made it work. Uh, we can all see. So I think it definitely unfolded the way it was supposed to. I thought I was going to have my three kids by now at 28. So I ain't got one yet. So I'm over here hoping I can still get the oh, three sure kids in. <laughs> so, you know, we all go through different phases of life at different times, but I feel like all the phases are sort of like the same. Like you said, that's sort of familiar to feel like you don't know how to feel in a, rela in a relationship or a situation. You don't know how serious it is. You don't know how to really com uh, communicate to whoever you're talking to, like, what are we without saying, what are we? Because I've said that so many times. <laughs> I feel like when I was dating, like, what are we? <laughs> and then you always get some bullshit answer. And... Exactly. Like, if you have to ask that question, right. that's probably your cue to exit the building. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So, I, I definitely sort of don't miss that. Yeah, I wouldn't either. <laughs> hey, it is a full-time job to be dating. Well, let's, now, let's, no, so. let's learn about your experiences <laughs> lately. <laughs> Since, what, three years, four years? Yeah. Uh, 2017? No. Why can't I do math? 2014, 16 is when I left single world. Okay. So, what's happened since 2016 on the <laughs> on the streets? Um, well, you know, you know, and I get this question all the time. Like, why are you single? Oh. Uh, you know, and to me, that is a major turn off when guys ask me that. Mm. It's just like, what, what the hell are you single? Right. <laughs> That's the real question. And so, it's just like, two each is on. <laughs> so, you know, everybody has, like you said, different timelines for what they see their life being. Um, you know, currently, um, I have specific career goals in mind. Um, I am a single mother of a six-year-old son, so I don't necessarily have the luxury of, you know, having the time to pursue and date someone. Um, now, I'm not saying that I wouldn't, because if someone came across that I'm single. <laughs> the right one. <laughs> um, but again, um, I find out very quickly um, if this is a guy that I want to continue pursuing. Um, so I do dates uh, by the third date I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, how do you know? Let's get the tea on this. What is like, I feel like this is so boss bitch status. Like, <laughs> seriously. If I, man, I told y'all he was my first relationship, so I just feel like if. I like ended up having to date again I would be so efficient at it because yeah. <laughs> I feel like 
I would be like this. Right. Like I would right. have a have to have a system. Right. Of, you ain't wasting my time. Exactly. And one, two, three. I mean, and not just you know our checklist that we all have or our wish list, but right. like a real system. So right. I want to know about this three date. Well, I haven't always been able to. I've had my yeah, own. yeah, of course. I've had relationships. You live and learn. Yeah. Um, but for me, that is what helped me um, become and think the way that I do now. Um, you know, you know, raising my son, I had to mature a lot faster than um, the people around me at the time, um, especially since I was pregnant while I was in college. Um, so, you know, all of that <laughs> life experiences has helped me, um, you know, determine the bullshit, you know, from realness. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, you know, I go, you know, it's very key into, you know, what the guy is saying and what he is talking about. Um, you know, looks can come and go, okay? Right. You can get cosmetic, sur or co cosmetic surgery, uh, whatever the case may be. Um, so if a guy is so focused, because I do get that a lot, he's so focused on my looks, like you this, you that. Um, if, if that's the majority of your compliments and you don't really see my, you know, professional side or my business side or the type of woman that I am and the way that I think and what I say, then for me, um, that's a red flag right there. You don't want no scrubs. <laughs> because I could be, you know, get old and not be as attractive anymore. So that just lets me know, you know, once the next hot thing comes around, right. you know, where your eyes going to go. Right. It's not going to be on me. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I think it was, but I get what you're saying. <laughs> uh, so that's one of the things. That then, <clears throat> you know, if a guy is just too into you, too pushy. He's wanted to move forward extremely fast, and this is just for me. Like I'm, a, like take it slow kind of guy. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> so I'm not into making rush decisions. Mm -hmm. I actually met someone. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't live here. Um, he lives in another state. Yeah, we clicked. Um, the connection was just there instantly for the both of us. Um, so you know, we you know talking every day, whether it's calling, texting, FaceTiming. Um, and then it got to a point to where, you know, he was making a point um, that we saw each other every month. Um, so either, you know, I would fly out to see him or he would fly down to see me nice. um, or we would go to, you know, somewhere together mm -hmm. um, and just spend that time together. Um, but, you know, um, the last time I saw him, um, I introduced him to my friends. Um, we went out to a bar, um, you know, we were all drinking, um, and so he was a little ready to go. Um, you know, why, why are you ready to go? Um, he was here from like Friday to Monday type of thing, mm -hmm. um, maybe even Thursday. And we literally, he literally didn't want to do anything but sit in the apartment all weekend. Um, so and so lifestyle. for me, yeah, yeah, it was just a telltale sign. It's mm -hmm. just like, yeah, I'm fine with doing that maybe once mm -hmm. or twice, but... I don't uh, see you, and <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to introduce you, and you want to stay cooped up. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And I'm the type of person, even now, like even with my son, I'm like, get dressed, get ready, mm -hmm. we rolling. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I'm not about to sit in the house all day. I'm not making right. any money. I'm not being anybody sitting in the house all day. Right. So we're going to go out and do something, even if it's just visiting people um, or doing things like that. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, that's what he wanted to do. And so I'm just like, okay. Yeah. And he had no real reason. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, so that is then, um, he was ready to buy a home, but he already had a house. He was ready to sell it make the profit, put it down on the new home, and get married. Okay. <laughs> he said, I, I want you in this house. house. <laughs> right. Barefoot and pregnant, too, it sounds like. <laughs> well, he actually already had two kids, so he was okay with not having any more. Or the poor, so I'm like, no, I'm having another mm -hmm. time. Um, but, you know, if I wanted to, he would. So he was just more... Um, you know, on that level. And for me, it's just a red flag. Like, we've been dating for six months. Like, I know some people say, you know when you know. Mm -hmm. And they don't have to be dating a person long before they get engaged. 
Right. But for me, this is long distance. Yeah. So I don't see your habits every day. Exactly. And I want to know why you want to be forward so fast. Right. So I sort of had an experience like that when I was single too. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't even like on your level, but it was definitely a red flag and I was so happy I caught it. This is a good story actually. <laughs> yeah, um, I met this guy out, we, I had an event for like a, this magazine I was writing for and we went out afterwards, a couple friends of mine, and met them. They were D-League basketball players, which I was like, I don't care about that, but they was obviously tall. I'm a tall girl. So, <laughs> and I like tall me. <laughs> so, six, five, six, seven, I'll, I'll, you got my attention, okay? So, he uh, caught my eye, and I caught his, apparently. Girl, introduced myself, and I gave him my number, because I still wanted to party with my friends. I'm always the type where, like, my friends are going to, before we're in a committed relationship, I'm going to ride up with my friends over any do. So, I like finished that little interaction and went back dancing with my friends. I'm not gonna sit up under you just because yeah. I gave you my number. Right. He literally sat across the room where he could like see me the whole time. And he was sitting down just watching me dance. Wow. <laughs> and then like his friend wanted to talk to my friend, so then they both got up and came over and he was like, I saw you dancing and I was like, Okay. <laughs> And he was like acting like he didn't want me to dance. Like oh, I was wow. his. No. I was like, Absolutely okay, this is not. sort of weird, but I sort of I was like already tipsy, so I didn't just <laughs> like really pay attention. He was very like aggressive with it, but like obviously not. It seems like this guy was pushing it, but what I'm talking about is like psycho level. Yeah. And so he lived in Arkansas, and I was. Um, still in Dallas and um, so he came maybe once and then after that I was like I knew it was not going anywhere. He was trying to say I love you. This is like a matter of like weeks. No. And then one night I was like listen I'm not on that level. He had two kids. He made me talk to them on the phone. What? Yeah. Oh wow. He was, <laughs> I was like he was looking for a mama and, exactly. and, and wife. And I was like, no. <laughs> and he, uh, so I blocked him one night, and this dude, or I put it on uh, Do Not Disturb, he called 200 times. Oh, wow. So I was like, I'm so glad I never invited that dude to that my house. That is like psycho. Yeah, level. he never had my address. So just, ladies, pay attention. If, I've been really watching these uh, documentaries on Netflix, but, and I, I don't trust people no more, no. so I'm sure as time goes on, I feel like it's going to be Right, right. And as I say, you know, it's very gentleman of him to offer to pick me up. Right. But I'm, I'm, I'll meet you there. Yeah, <laughs> like, just the smallest thing. There's only one person, you know, that I would let pick me up, and that's somebody that I trust. Right. Um, and that's about it. Like, yeah. everybody else, we, I don't want I, I've known you for, you know, quite a few months. Like, we not getting the address. <laughs> I completely agree with that. I, I don't like that. So, ladies and men, I mean, shit, there's there's crazy females too. Yeah, there is. Um, but just be careful. Looking for that <laughs> <laughs> you gonna marry me today. <laughs> so, yeah, after that situation, that's why I sort of like took a break off of like dating. Yeah. And I ended up, I was working at AT&T. And I think this is more common than we think. A lot of females do put their dating yeah. on hold. Yeah, I so. mean, when, and I feel like you should. You should be yeah. able to do that. I want you should be comfortable exactly. single. Please, like, you should not always oh feel like Hallelujah. you Cheers need to, to go that out one. with someone. Otherwise, homegirl, you got some issues mm -hmm. you need to work out within yourself. Listen, I'm always like, I honestly missed being single at times because that's when. I was so in tune with who I was and loving myself and taking care of myself. But yeah, it really makes me sad when I see females who like break up and instantly you have to find that next relationship or that next situation. And I'm like, give yourself time to heal and listen to yourself and evaluate what happened so you can change right, it for the right. next time. And there's no amount of time right. that is the right amount of time. Right. So it really just depends on you when you're overly healed. 
Um, when I broke up with my son's dad, it took me almost a year. When I broke up with my son's dad, it took me almost a year um, before I got back out on the dating market. Um, which was fine because right. that was the time I needed to find out who I was and what I wanted to do in life. Right. Um, so I was very appreciative that I took that time for myself rather than, you know, trying what? to find the next thing. Right, exactly. It doesn't say anything about you if you don't have a man. You know, and it seems like so many times they feel like they have to be in something mm -hmm. to know or show their worth. And I'm like, girl. No, that's not the way we do things, or we should do things. So, I, I definitely want to do that as a tip. So, I think we have some tips going here. Number yeah. one, don't um, rush into it. Don't rush into it. Number two, a dating scene, don't give out that address. Always meet them there, or Uber there if you don't want to drive. Right. If you feel like you're going to drink, Uber. Um, we all have basically smartphones with the little emergency button these days. What and else? anytime I go out with a guy, maybe some place that I'm not up. familiar with, even when I travel and you know, I may go out of town with someone. You better know they're going to have a picture of that driver's license or the address to where we're going. And my location is going to be turned on that whole time. On, oh, on and sharing with you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, those are some good tips. She is good. I, I knew this was going to be good. So I met my fiance at work. I honestly feel like that's a great way to meet like new people because you see them almost every day. You see them on their good days, on their bad days, and you can see their character re reacting to those situations. Um, and they see the real you too because I feel like when I was dating, again, before I really knew what the hell I was doing, I really did have like a persona like I felt like when I was dating. Like I didn't really want all of the flaws of me to like be presented up front when dating. Cause we're, I mean, when you're trying to woo somebody you like feeling, you ain't gonna put all of your flaws on the front street. Right. I, it wasn't necessarily that I would hide flaws, but it would also be like not goofy, silly, crazy Taylor <laughs> that I am. And so I feel like at work, you sort of let those guards down eventually, yeah. especially where I met him, where we were not in a corporate environment. So that we were very much so sales and fast paced environment. So we probably had more freedom for that. But if not at work, where did you suggest like getting that experience? Um, I don't have any specific places. Um, you kind of just have to take it for what it is. You can meet someone at the grocery store, <laughs> like yes. literally. Um, guys, I have dated in the past. Um, I have met, I've actually dated someone for my job before. Um, I have dated someone that I have met through mutual friends. Um, I'm not really big on the whole um, dating websites thing, so I've never okay. really actually met up with anybody up there. Um, you know, I've dated someone that I've met at the bar before. I know there was this big, you know, standard, oh, you don't want to date anybody that you meet at the bar. And I'm like, why not? Okay, that, that They're is, the same yeah. guys exactly. that you would meet at work or at the grocery but store. But I, I would be like, I'm at the bar. Exactly. I'm like, what? <laughs> So I'm like, why not? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you never know. I mean, like you can meet a guy at church and he could be a dog. So right. it really don't matter where you meet them. It's exactly. just like, hopefully they present their real self to you no matter where you meet them. So. Exactly. Yes. So I love it. Okay, let's move on to friendships. Yeah. Like and subscribe. See you next time. Bye. Thanks for having me. It took me almost a year. What? Before... Are you talking about my daddy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anyways.